present to you on stage very quickly on Marketplace. So we've, we've had five of our Marketplace ideas, our creative responses to climate change, uh, offer to stand up and present their ideas in very brief three-minute rounds. And we have a diverse array of responses. That includes a, a public campaign, an app development, a research project, uh, an artistic musical endeavor, and, and a youth initiative. So I'm going to ask each of those campaigners uh, or or you can say creative responders who come to the stage and share their ideas to give a flavor of what's in the marketplace for the great community. So I very much welcome my first one, Sorsha Kavanagh, who is representing the Conscious Club. Hello everyone, um, I feel very, very privileged to be here. I'm just going to go back to 1991, 27 years ago, when Miss Mary Robinson visited the school that I attended this year when I started. And we were hosting a fair trade and social justice week. It was the biggest excitement I can share that week to have uh, you come along with a convoy of cars. It, huge excitement. <laughs> I'm delighted to say that 27 years on, having conversations about the environment is much easier than it was then. You were just really a hippie kind of in the past if you were talking about environment, and I'm sure a lot of you would know where I'm coming from. It wasn't as easy, but now thankfully we're all on the platform and talking about this conversation. So to move along to the Conscious Club campaign, our campaign started in 2016. We were a group of individuals who got together on the um, Zero Waste Starland Facebook page, very concerned about the disposable cups and the amount of them that we were going through in the country. They were not recyclable and they were a single-use item. So together we formed a committee and we thought we were trying to address the issue. Um, there are 22,000 cups and lids disposed of every hour in Ireland. It's a phenomenal amount for something that is used literally for 10 to 15 minutes. We know obviously that the disposal of these items is an issue, but more importantly, it's whole life cycle analysis of a product, a single use product. So we try to engage with people to ask them to think about, you know, the raw materials, the transport of these goods, the production, the distribution, and then the end of life disposal. All of these activities have a carbon footprint, every single one of them for something that we may take and throw away. <coughs> so we try to find a solution to this, and um, without a levy in place by our government, we <coughs> thought that the best thing to do was to try and introduce a reward system for customers to carry their own reusable cup. And um, we know the plastic bag levy has worked, but we, have, we haven't got that choice. So we set about engaging all across the country and asking them to offer a discount to anyone who provided it, brought in their reusable cup. And if they didn't provide a discount, they could also provide an incentive like an extra stamp. Any cafes who participated in our campaign, we matched them and geotyped them. And if anybody was to click on any of these icons on our map, they would see the name of the cafe and the discount or incentive that they offer. So we always ask cafes to offer a ceramic cup first. You'll see cafes who actually have cups in, in their cafes disposable, just sit and sit. It's the most environmentally friendly of the options. Uh, cafes are also rewarded um, by being promoted across our social media platforms. We work with companies, universities, colleges, all types of different groups across the country. And the great thing about it is you can see how young and old are actually interacting with one another, in particular tiny towns groups, where it's predominantly um, retired people who might set up the tiny towns group. They'll actually work with transition year students from uh, the schools in their locality to bring about a campaign to their area. So it's really important that it actually involves everybody. And um, companies are also very interested in reducing their waste and reducing their carbon footprint. Our main message is all about reuse. We want to change people's behaviour. The book is not going to save the planet. We're very well aware of that. But what we want to do is tap into people thinking more about reuse and reducing their impact on the environment. And hopefully they will bring that concept to other aspects of their lives. So conscious consumer is what we're aiming for. Um, and also to look at sustainable goals, sustainable development goals 11 and 12. Um, if anybody ever wants any help bringing a campaign,
complaining to their area or to their uni college, university, organization, please don't hesitate to contact us.
power station, in theory, is going to be decommissioned maybe between 2025 and 2030, with immediate removal of 15% of our current CO2 emissions. The consequence of the closure, however, that will be a significant local job loss, and we need a solution of sustainable employment for the local community. If we look to the west coast of Ireland, then the wave energy resource there is huge. The proposed project really aims at mobilizing the citizens of the Shannon region to tap this resource, create sustainable employment, while facilitating the transition to low carbon electricity in Ireland. The development of wave energy converters has taken some time, and I've done that throughout my whole career as an academic, and a number of spectacular failures have occurred on the way. The commercialization of wave energy converters is now re nearing reality, with an Irish company leading the field, and they're building a one megawatt prototype in the US uh, after over 15 years of development, and they're ready to come back to Ireland uh, with a market rollout in uh, 2021. In 1925, the Irish government in the new state showed great courage and foresight in investing one-fifth of its annual budget to construct the first Shannon scheme. With a power station at Dartmouth, Russia, that's equivalent to an investment of 16 billion euros today. This powered the whole country at that time, but now only powers about 3%. As I say, my proposed project can be seen as the second Shannon scheme with development in the Shannon region, with the first phase, a construction of an offshore wave power station between now and 2032, uh, with a full build up to 900 megawatts by uh, 2040. If this project is accepted by the Irish government, we've allocated already 4 billion euros on the Project Island 2040 for rural regeneration and climate action, then the device hulls can be delivered to, to the Shannon Estuary, fitted out with the power conversion system there, and the local industry will develop around this activity to provide replacement employment for the redundant Money Point staff. The wave energy power station will comprise an array of many devices, a bit like the onshore wind turbines, connected together electrically. The deployment offshore is made using tugs, like those already stationed at Foynes and the subsequent operation maintenance will provide more local employment for a dwindling uh, fishing industry. So, uh, the second Shannon scheme will be connected to the shore at Money Point via a subsea cable which avoids constructing pylons in County Clare and so reduces the environmental impact. The project will provide significant carbon-free electricity for Ireland it will also provide sustainable long-term employment for the citizens of the Shannon region. This project model led by the citizens can be replicated in coastal communities worldwide. Offshore islands and developing regions can use the electricity produced to create portable water, make ice for the fishermen, as well as powering the local communities. So I'd like to uh, look for your support in seeing this happening into the future. Thank you very much. Visualization of this piece to look at if you want a more immersive experience. 
to put you can close your eyes. Um, and the piece itself is uh, a, a chilly, uh, icy piece uh, that shows the, the impression of the chaos and the coffee that came from the, the northern hills. So this is this is the
when we get the first two seasons in Ireland. A seven is an amazing, um, it's an awesome invention. Of, it's a bin that's filled with water and has a pump which pulls in the rubbish and pushes out with water. These two awesome stuff do in Australia created it. <laughs> And I've done a lot of public speaking, so just in case anyone wants to know, um, I tell you about casting and why I care about the scene, like I'm doing right now. <laughs> in the future, I would, and there's a couple of things I would like to achieve. For example, I want to launch a um, glossy and beach cleaners and shopping bag, which is a bag made out of a recycled fishing rig. I also would like to continue on my blog, continue beach cleaning. And next year, um, if I can, I want to go to Indonesia, where I hope to help clean the plastic river. And I also want to talk to children who live there to exchange ideas and just so they I see what they think of the world and how they think they can change to help change the world. As we all know, there's a war going on a war against plastic. And the funny thing is, I know we're going to win this war. And there's three reasons why I know this. Reason one, because everyone's more aware of the situation now, and they don't just sweep it under the carpet, and they're doing what they can to help now. Reason two, because people are coming up with these awesome inventions every day. For example, the shampoo bar, toothpaste palette, and one of my favorites, CD. <laughs> and reason three, because children my age and younger are taking action and responsibility to clean up the mess that I think my parents' generation left. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, and goodbye. <laughs>